some of you will have noticed that in the Rio political declaration, there was nothing about inequities in power, money and resources. What absent-mindedness of the drafters of the political declaration. They forgot. If you believe that, you believe anything. <laughs> we talked about the conditions of daily life. In fact, they weren't the draft of the Rio Declaration was not even going to mention the Commission on Social Determinants of Health until the Brazilians dug their heels in and said, you can't not do that. So they finally mentioned it. Uh, conditions of daily life, but importantly, the structural drivers and health equity and aid policies was very important. In the wake of the Global Commission, we made a virtue of necessity. We had a global reach. We were trying to make recommendations for Sub-Saharan Africa and Latin America and North America and Europe and Asia and everywhere else. How is that possible? How can you have a set of practical recommendations that would be appropriate for Mozambique and Canada? They look very different. So we made a virtue of necessity and we said it's very important that our recommendations be looked at in specific contexts. And in Britain, the government of the day, then a Labour government, invited me to conduct a review of health inequalities in Britain with the explicit focus of answering the question, how could we learn from the Global Commission on Social Determinants of Health in a way that would be suitable for our national context. And we very much followed the Commission's conceptual framework and took a life course approach. Prenatal, preschool, school, training. Let me divert for a moment and say one of the things that I tried to do over the last couple of years was to engage the medical profession. For some very odd reason, I spent a year as president of the British Medical Association. I said, very odd reason. I mean, I've spent my career studying the social determinants of health and research, and then in the commission report, we talk about the social determinants. What do doctors have to do with health? What have they got to do with this story? And so the BMA comes along and says, would you be president? I said, you must know what I do. He said, we know what you do. Well, I'm not going to stop talking about health inequalities just because I'm president of the BMA. He said, that's okay. You can do that. Will you support me in this agenda? I said, yeah. And I kept pushing and everything I asked, they said, yes. And I thought in the afterwards that I was not ambitious enough. I should have kept pushing until they said no. Um, but I, well, one of the things that I said I wanted to do, I'd been, as president-elect, they have an, an annual dinner, black tie thing, with the presidents of the medical royal colleges. And when I went as president-elect, at this dinner, you talk to the person next to you and they nice food and so on, and the president says a few words and somebody else gets up and makes a joke and then you'll go home. And I thought, what a waste. Get all these people in the room and that's what, all that happens. And I said, no, I'm going to do it differently. I, given my ethnic background, the Protestant ethic doesn't sit very well on me, but never mind. Um, I'm going to do it differently. So I said to the BMA people, I'd like to invite the, the presidents of the medical royal colleges for a round table discussion. We'll give them dinner because I'd like this equivalent dinner in the spring to reflect at least half a year of work we've been doing together. So I invited the presidents of the medical royal colleges. How can your college get involved in this issue? The Royal College of Psychiatrists produced a report, mental health, public health. They said without mental health there can be no public health and without public health there can be no mental health. 
full of social determinants of health. Absolutely delighted. The Royal College of Pediatrics and Child Health, very positive, very supportive. The obstetricians and gynecologists that are just one step further evolved than the surgeons. I mean, if you really want to go back to Neanderthal, um, well, the, the obstetricians are one step uh, further on than the surgeons, but not very far. But the president liked all this. He liked this discussion we had at BMA House, and he invited me to talk to their council. So I presented this life course, and I said, your interest is in getting a healthy baby out. Do you care what happens to the baby after it's come out? They looked a bit nervous. I said, that baby is going to become a parent, a mother or a father. And what happens after that baby comes out determines what sort of parent it's going to become. In fact, if you want to get a healthy outcome of pregnancy, you should start with the baby. Round the whole cycle. And one obstetrician said, yeah, 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 said at the lunch afterwards, yeah, 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 nothing will ever happen. And as I've explained in a different context, one of the things that's happened to me since we've been doing this work is that I've developed selective deafness. I don't hear cynicism. So when people express cynical comments, it just goes right past, doesn't go in. Well, after several discussions with the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, they invited me back for breakfast. Best breakfast I ever had. They said, we wanted to present to you our thoughts about how we should be rethinking the practice of obstetrics. We think we should be the advocates for women's health through the life course. Wow. I said, would you think of changing the name of the college to the Royal College of Women's Health? That was a step too far. <laughs> so there's still ONG. But nevertheless, it is a change. Once you start thinking, I said, have you thought of the fact that two-thirds of the government's financial cuts, the austerity program, are falling on women? No, they haven't thought about that. I said, do you think that's relevant? to women's health. If you're going to be the advocates for women's health, do you think you should say something about that? That the government's austerity program is selectively affecting women more than men? I don't know where to stop is my problem. So I got them so far, but then I was pushing them a little bit further. Nevertheless, it's great that they're thinking about the life course. 